Hello and welcome to the Wellesley Needlepoint Collections Intro to Needlepoint. Um, today I'm going to be introducing you to the basic, a basic needlepoint stitch and rolling into doing the continental stitch. The things that you'll need to do this lesson will be a pair of scissors. I kind of like these storks because they're cute and they feel good and they're sharp. I'll put those there. They feel good in my hands. The second thing we're going to be using will be some thread. I'm using silk and ivory, which is a mix of silk and wool. Um, it's a slightly thicker thread, but the canvas that I'm stitching on is a 13 mesh canvas. So this thread is what we use to cover the canvas well. Um, and then the other thing that you'll need will be a needle threader. Uh, a couple things about the canvas before we get started. This here is just a little magnet that I that you can get and you can put it on your work and it stores your needles for you. It's just a handy way to not end up with needles in your couch cushions. Um, so a couple things about mesh. That's the canvas that's right here. And we're working on 13 mesh canvas. That means that there are 13 stitches per inch. Um, there is there are many different sizes. The other popular size that you see is a 18 mesh canvas. So there would be 18 stitches per inch. So that canvas, those canvases would be tighter. The stitches would be smaller. We're using 13 today so that we can more easily see this canvas while we're working. Um, so before we get rolling, I just want to talk a little bit about what a stitch is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Um, when you think about canvas, the way that I like to think about teaching needlepoint is this canvas is made up of all these threads that run this way and this way. And it, they, they're woven together, so you'll see some are um, like this and some are like that, but they're, each intersection has a little X on it. And all a needlepoint stitch is, is when you're coming in this, say this hole, let's say I want to stitch this stitch right here, I would bring my thread up through this hole, and then I would go down through that hole. And that, um, then my thread would lay across that X. That's your basic needlepoint stitch. So when people talk about traditional needlepoint, all it is is bringing your thread up in one corner and taking it to the other corner so that that X is covered in thread. You'll hear kind of three different terms um, for the needlepoint stitch. You'll hear people use tent stitch, continental stitch, and basket weave stitch. All The only difference between those three stitches is the order in which this little stitch that we do is connected together. So when you do the continental stitch, you would do a row at a time, but it's always that same stitch just going across the X in each one. In basket weave, you're doing a row also, but it's a diagonal row, and that would be in another video that we'll do. And then third is the tent stitch, which is often used when they're talking about maybe doing two or three stitches here, and then going over here and doing two or three stitches, but it's all basically the exact same stitch. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna begin by threading the needle. Let me zoom out again so it's more easy to see. We need a thread, piece of thread, a needle threader for starters. Some people can do it without it, that's fine too and a needle. And again, I'm using these needles. This is a size 20 um, tapestry needle. So a tapestry needle means that the eye is reasonably large so that threads can get through it. And the point is sharp like a needle, but not, not poking you in painful sharp. So when you use a needle threader, one of the ways to think about this is I want the thread to go through the needle eye so the first thing I'm going to do is put the needle threader through the needle eye just like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold it there. Then I'm going to get my thread, put it through the loop of the needle threader, hold it there and move this out of the way so you can see, and then just pull the whole thing through. And that's how I get the needle 
on my, or the thread on my needle, just like that. Now it is possible to do this without a needle threader. I'll show you that method as well. Some people are comfortable with it, but not all. So the way that I do, I do, I often thread my needles this way, unless the thread is very thick and it's having a hard time getting through. I hold the thread up into the needle like this. I kind of tighten it with the needle and I pinch it so that you can see just a teeny bit of it sticking out. Take the needle on its side and run it through like this. If you ever have trouble or you're using this method and it's not going through, try the other side of the needle. Um, needles are stamped and one side is usually different than the other side. It's very hard to see, but um, they are just a little bit different. So that's how you thread your needle. Okay, so now that my needle is threaded, and when you're working with your needle or your thread, you don't want, this is the tail, you don't want this too crazy, crazy long, and you also don't want it too short like this, because if it is, every time you pull the needle through, you might pull the needle off of the thread. So you just kind of keep it at a reasonable distance like this. Now I've done what's called a waist knot, so at the end of the thread I've tied a knot, and I'll explain to you how the waist knot works um, after we kind of get rolling with stitching. But I'm going to begin by just tied a knot and I run that through. That's going to secure my thread. Now, my first stitch, I'm coming up. And the stitch that I'm going to do, and I'm going to zoom in so you can more easily see it. The first stitch I'm going to do will be this X right there. So what I've done is I'm coming up in the lower left of that X, and I'm going to go down in the upper right of that same X. And the thread is going to gently cover it. Right. Now in the continental stitch, you're going to do this little stitch, which is all needlepoint is, is just a bunch of these stitches put together in a row. So the next stitch I'm going to do will be the one I'm going to do is going to be the one right next to it. So I'm going to come up in that hole right next to the one I just stitched. And it's going to take you a while to know, see how I poke up and I go into a lot of different places. It'll take you a while to coordinate your eyes and your fingers to know how to bring the needle up from the back in the hole that you want, but it does get easier. Just practice, we'll make it, and you'll get it in no time at all. And even still, I sometimes struggle trying to find it. So you're coming in this hole right here, and because I'm gonna do, going to do this stitch, I'm gonna go right down in boop, that hole. There's my second stitch. Right. Now I can just keep going in a nice tidy row. If your thread starts to tangle or not, just let the needle and the thread hang loose and unwind itself. Sometimes in the process of stitching, your needle and your thread will get wound and then they'll kind of knot and tangle. Don't sweat that. Just let the thread hang down and unwind itself naturally. So there's my first row. All right, now it's time to do the row below it. So we have a couple different options, but the stitch that I wanna stitch first will be this one right here. All right, and there's, we can come up in this hole, again, the lower left of that little X, and go down in the upper right. But you can also come from the upper right and go to the lower left. As long as all your stitches are going in the same direction, that works too. You do have to be careful that when you're working on a project and you're holding it in your hand, it's very easy to have to move the canvas around. And so you do need to kind of check what the direction of the stitches are on another part of the canvas before you start stitching to be sure that all your stitches are going in the same direction. 
So I'm putting in my second row here. Now, as you can see, I'm actually working on all white a blank canvas and you're most likely going to be working on a painted canvas. So the way a painted canvas works is that each of these X's will be painted a color and the better canvases that are stitch painted, which I highly recommend, are uh, easier to know where to put your colors. So if I was stitching this and I was using green, I would be putting green over a stitch or a cross here that is painted green. It makes no difference what everything around it is painted. It just matters what that X is painted. And sometimes it can be a little bit vague. Um, and then you can kind of use your creative license if you think that it should be that size or a different size or whatever. So there is, so I'm now starting on my third row. So after we get to the end of this third row, I'll show you how to switch colors and how to end your threads. Because if I now am encountering an area that is painted yellow, I'm going to want to put in a yellow thread. Okay, let's finish this row just like so. That's your continental stitch.